Hello everyone, Pastor Lon here at Homestead and Pastor, my beautiful wife, Robbie Lynn. <clears throat> Hope everybody's doing well. We want to welcome you guys back to our next episode of Come Sit a Spell. Hope you uh, pull up a chair and join us on the front porch here on Harmon Acres Homestead in South Carolina. As always, we're out here enjoying this beautiful weather. It's a nice weather, ain't it? A a a except yeah. for the pollen. Yeah. I'm going to give them a little update on the weather, on the temperature, how warm it is here in South Carolina. Hot and pollen is all I got to say. Yeah. It just went from winter to summer. Yep, but hey. I don't have to like it. I can't do nothing about it, but I ain't got to like it. Yep. 76 tomorrow, 81 Friday. What is it right now? 64. 64 now. In the 70s yeah, and 80s. 63, so. That's for how many days out? 10 days. Is that? I'll be down to 50 some though. That's next week. Next They'll change week. it by then. It'll go up 80. Pretty, yeah. But anyway, it really is pretty good weather. It's been real warm, but uh, you, at least this time of year, the humidity ain't that That's bad. It's not normal. Well, what is normal in this world anymore? Listen, I'm telling you, that's the truth. You just the, spoke the truth. The only <laughs> thing that's normal. Um, is God <laughs> and God's word. I still think it stays normal. It's hard to find normal. Either. It is. It is. But anyway, so much for the weather. Hope y'all let us know what kind of weather y'all have in y'all's neck of the woods. Let us know what state you're in or what country you're in or what the weather's like where you are. Ready to um, get started with the garden preparation. You've been starting some seeds today. I'm Peppers. afraid we're getting full, maybe. Yeah, it might be, but. But they won't you, be ready to go in the garden anyway until... But you bought that little uh, greenhouse... Seed starter-like thing. Go ...in the house. Uh, I, I'm a, I'm a, I took a picture a while ago of the little trays with the seeds. Robin Lynn just uh, started with pepper and peppers and uh, tomatoes. And I and we got some uh, sweet potatoes in there. We don't yeah, that's the first year I've tried it that way to try to get some potato sweet potato but slips. We got the greenhouse out here, but we got to get some stuff going in. But um, she's got these started in the house. When um, they get big enough, I can put them out there. Right, but um, I, I, I took a picture of that. I'll try to insert a picture here um, so you can see her little greenhouse seed starter that we keep it on the inside. I did start some last year in the greenhouse successfully after one or two failures because I don't have a fan out there yet and my heater wasn't, it was cool there, during that time and I, my heater wasn't strong enough yep. or something. Anyway, I had to restart them a couple times, but I did finally get pe peppers and tomatoes. Yeah, we, we got to get that. Well, I got to get you a fan set up out there, especially with this heat coming on like it is. It was so, it was so frustrating because... <coughs> Like I said, I mean, it's hot, too hot one day and then too cold the next night. And it's just, yep. I could control them better in this environment I got them in now in the True. house. I mean, so, keep a better eye on them. I don't know if I posted a picture in the last come to the spell with the baby chicks that had hatched out there. That's how bad it's my open. memory is. I took a picture. I can't remember if I inserted it or not. I have to look back on that video. If I didn't, I'll insert one in here. All those that hatched are still living, and we got two incubators full of eggs again. Well, like in about a few, maybe yeah. six, but between the two, almost completely full. Uh, her mama's been giving us some um, some fertile eggs from her chickens. For her. Quiet, isn't it? It is quiet. It was a little noisy with the drag strip going. Well, it's amazing. I just noticed when she says quiet, I don't hear not one ninny. Usually you hear those guineas making a little. Last night they were carrying on. They terrible. were. Last night we had. Um, and Kevin was going on. Yeah, it was Kevin and Peacock was going on. Last night though we had um, our best friends, brother Lanny R and his wife, sister Gwen R, over. Um, and Corey and Madison, our son Corey and his girlfriend Madison was over. And then when Gavin got back in from the gym, he come in there and joined us, but. I cooked cheeseburgers on the on the grill, on the Blackstone grill, and Robin Lynn uh, fried us up some of them homemade fries. I remember And we cut them up real thin and fried them, man. You talking about good? Golly, they were really good. 
McDonald's ain't got nothing on me. Ain't McDonald's ain't got nothing on you, babe. And oh. then we had coffee and sat out here on the porch. Um, it was cold out here last night. It was night. pretty chilly, but we sat out here with them and had a good time of fellowship with them. Madison Corey had blankets. I'm, I should have took a picture of them uh, clothesline posts he brought me. Brother R's daddy was a genius in his own right. Yeah, I might I do a video and we put them in the ground, but they made out of... Uh, I'm, a, I'm not going to tell you. I'm waiting to be a surprise to you. I don't even know what they are. Uh, I think I know. That, yeah. You know, <laughs> that's right. Don't tell them yet. Okay. I'll, I'm going to do a little video on that that we're going to get them cleaned up and in the ground. I'll share with you what they are. While we're staying on the farm animals, uh, how about our... Um, experience with the cow. You know, I told you I had that cow locked up. Um, we've done a little bit of research on that and watched some videos of Joel Salatin and we've changed our, our stance too, on that. Too, about too. feeding them out with grain and stuff. But he says that I won't get into all the details and I don't know enough about it to really talk about it. But basically, I mean, I, my thought them. was if you don't feed them grain their whole life, why are you going to feed them yep, grain so, the last 30 or 60 Anyway, years? we got her locked, had her locked up in the round pen. Was feeding her out in grain and watched his videos. And we decided not to do that. Turn her back out in the pasture and got her in the back pasture back there. Well, but, yeah. How long did it take us to get her in there? It didn't take as long as you think. Now, how much trouble was it? It was a little bit of trouble, but okay. what we done? We decided to say we got the other three cows. We're going to take to the sale, and um, I couldn't get them loaded the other day because didn't have them in a chute and didn't have them in the round pen because I had that cow in the round pen. So we decided not to feed her out on grain. So we took her out. And Robin and we I, tricked her out. we tricked her out and tricked the other three in the round pen where we had the cows in there that Ben and Denise got from us. So we got them in there now. Well, tell us, tell them about the little experience getting her out. We fooled her out and she came out like a raging bull. Oh, yeah. She out like a bull. I mean, she's crazy. She, she was spinning around. Slinging her just head like and the bull, and everything. Just, just like a bull when a bull one. rider is riding Making the that bull. noise, yeah. yeah. I mean, just bucking and a carrying on, slinging, slobber and spit and snot everywhere, and I mean, riding around just like you were on her back. Yeah. And then when she calmed down, she went to snorting and coming at us and all. Robbie Lynn was on the four wheeler, and uh, I was a smart one. Well, I was staying kind of close to the four wheeler, but anyway. But then we had to pull her around to the back so we could get the other three and in. And we got them in, the three in there, and got them locked up. So then we had to try to lure her down to the back pasture and the gate. She didn't want to go. Robin was trying to get her in there with the four wheeler, but. I wasn't. I, I put enough pressure I had to. <laughs> I had the bucket of feed trying to get them. I think she got, the cows got more sense to give them credit for. She followed us all the way down and we got to the gate. She would not go in the gate. So then she started running, bucking and carrying on. So I told the Robin kept trying to round up and she was worried that she might turn on her while she was on that four wheel and charge us. So I said, hey, we gotta put some pressure on her. So I got the four wheel in and let her get over at the gate <clears throat> in a safe place. And I put the pressure on her. I put the pressure on her with that four wheel like I was on a, like a cowboy on a horse and uh, got her pretty tired and she went right on in the gate finally after a little corralling. And I came out the gate. So now we got her in the back pasture. We're gonna feed her hay and let her eat the, the, the grass in the pasture back there. <clears throat> and um, got the other three in the corral. And I'm hoping by the time y'all watch this video, I'll be done delivering them to the sale, I hope. So we'll try to load them in the morning. Cross your fingers for in the morning. But then that's gonna open up the pasture and all where we can start Everything's growing pretty good, and it'll, um, we can start the rotational grazing with the cat, with the sheep and the goats out there. We basically kind of we got rid of the horses; they ate so much, and we really didn't use them. They're too big, really to handle. And then the cows, same way. Like I said, we're gonna take that one to the butcher, and that'll be enough meat to last for a long time. Um, and then we're gonna sell those other three at the sale. Then we just have the sheep and the goats, as far as in the pasture out there, and. and we're going to fix that chicken tractor where we can move the chicken around out there, too. But it'll be a lot better and easier on Rob Lynn and I to handle the smaller animals. Plus, they don't eat as much, and we can just kind of move them where we want them to go. Yeah, because our hay bill this past it was winter was out, outrageous. Yeah, too much. So we 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 cutting back on that, curtailing that, and uh, was a lot more simplified and easy, easier for us to handle the smaller animals. Hopefully the next cow that comes on this farm will be, be a, a mini 
Milk cow. Yeah, that's, we may end up with a mini milk cow, but. If we ever do that, <coughs> then I can get rid of the milk. I will never get rid of two of them. You mean the, Got it. Yeah, yeah. That's a little bit in Hershey. Maybe. Uh, well, three then. You wouldn't get a little, a little bit in Hershey. No, I probably went three, probably. Yeah. There we go. When I only got five. Yeah. But anyway, that's where we're already at with the livestock and stuff. And, um, Eventually, if we get the turtles out the pond, I'd love to have some more ducks and geese. But only if we can keep them in yeah. the pond. Because you know, I mean, you if know, you could put, if we get that fence up, and we can keep them out there. Well, we can, but we, we can. gotta get the we duck, We gotta get the turtles out of there though, because I seen one there when I was on the island. I was seen another one in there just this week. Well, tell us how to get rid of turtles but, other than having to sit out there and shoot them. Twenty-two. But, I mean, you can't stay out there all the time. They are pretty, and the ducks and the geese and stuff, but if you can't keep them in a pond, they are nasty. You know that. We're not even, we're not even gonna discuss having them up at the house. That's out. You don't want that either, really. You said that's what killed the goats. That's not. It's not. They had to contribute to it. What didn't? They was pooping in that water. We've had a lot going on since last week. We have a lot going on during the week. Hey, that's Jordan. We have a lot going on um, from week one week to the next. We're real this, busy. This right week here. is kind of busy. Had the ox in we the got ditch. Church Wednesday, Thursday, fellowship. And Saturday, we got um, Colin's, Colin's birthday, part, party, birthday out party out here. Yeah, I might try to film a little bit of that. Depends on how it all goes. But, um,. Yeah, last Sunday the ox was in the ditch with the washing machine and dryer finally went all the way out. And, uh, we, we had a subscriber that sent us a donation toward, it said for use it towards wash the washer or whatever. So, <clears throat> and I wanted to use, I wanted to get all the goodie I could out of that one. Now I kept it did. going as long as I could until eventually the, what you call that thing? Agitator. Agitator just broke and it wouldn't work. <laughs> I was dealing with having to put a screwdriver in it to make it work anyway because of the lid lock was broke and I was almost the only one that could finagle it to make it work. So it was aggravating because people, other, nobody else could wash clothes but me. Like we were going somewhere in court yeah. and Gavin wanted to wash, they couldn't wash their clothes. Gavin's calling me talking about, how do you make this washer work? So anyway, <laughs> we was able to get a new washer and a new dryer and, and that both of those didn't last, what, five? The dryer five? messed up after that too. The, but I mean, you, we've had them, what, since we moved here? Six years, almost six about years. six years and they've gone out while like everything else does. It's, but if we can fix that. I've seen where I can order a part for the lid lock, and I don't know about the agitator. What we're gonna do? Is I had to go ahead and get the new one to get her, her up and running because it was piling up. Imagine with six of us right here and Michaela's Ma bed clothes every day. Yeah, Michaela she has to wash her bed clothes every day. So um, anyway, got that going. I had to do that Sunday though after church, and that's I the only day they would deliver it. Yeah, but speaking well, of my experience, that's what I want to talk about. We went to Home Lowe's Depot. First. Did we go to Lowe's first? Uh, Home Depot first. Yeah, Home Depot first. And, um. Found one I like. And asked them to have it in stock. And they said, no. Mm -hmm. and have we'll, them in the warehouse. Have them in the warehouse. And we couldn't get it until. Sometime this week. Yeah. It was like. I said, mm -hmm. like I said, I five have, or six I days said, I can't from wait when that we. Long. My, actually, I thought it was like March the 7th. So it mm -hmm. wouldn't even been yet. We wouldn't even had it yet. So. Time he told us that was like no, we was out. So we left Home Depot and went to Lowe's. Same thing though, basically. But not quite as long. Not quite as long, but, but they didn't have it in stock either. But get, here's this, what was crazy. You talking about the delivery? Yeah. Go ahead. We asked about us picking it up instead of having it delivered. If it would be quicker, he said no. Actually, it'd be like a week longer if you come and pick it up because. I don't know, something about it takes longer for them to deliver it to the store for for them to, for us to come pick it up. It'd be quicker for them to bring it from their warehouse to our house. But to me, that makes no sense. No. I don't know. It, they it, would have to bring it from the warehouse to Lowe's it, and unload it, and we'd have to go get it. And he said that would take them what longer. What day was that we went by there? Last Thursday? Friday. Friday? Yep. All right. They said last Friday that if I wanted to pick it up, they, I w they wouldn't be able to get to the store till like Thursday. If then, he said it might be longer This than week or the following week. But if I wanted them to deliver it to our house, they could have it Sunday, from Thursday to Sunday. So that's why we went ahead and went with Sunday. They delivered the dryer and the washing, but I just, that's just like, I just, I can't, I couldn't wrap my 
head around why how's it easier for you to just bring it to my house from the warehouse and i live not 20 minutes 25 minutes from the store and my thing is why don't you have at least a couple of washer and dryers in the back in stock yeah. nothing in stock anymore that was so frustrating it's, my back when we were growing up you remember all the grocery stores the uh, hardware stores, stores like that, they, they had stuff in stock. I mean, what's the difference in storing in a warehouse and storing it back in the back? I mean, what do they, they have in the back? But but while we were there, we did see some other customers that were getting a refrigerator, and they gave us some advice on what kind to buy on yeah. because he said they had been buying one almost every year because well, his wife broke it is what he, she, he said. What it we, wasn't last. What we had was um a GE. A GE, both wash and drivers GE and like I said I'm gonna try to um, do some repairs on the washing machine and have it for a spare out there in the in the uh, shed um, for her and then the dryer a spare or either an just extra and the dryer is going to her mom because she has a little something wrong with hers we figure she can take the one we got and hopefully her daddy can get that going so her mom might have a good dryer she'll probably get it going yeah I think it's like the switch. But I want to ask y'all a question. You know, y'all, especially the women on here that do, I guess, that does most of the washing, but um, do y'all prefer the one with the agitator in it or without the agitator? What you prefer? With. That's why I, know, I knew that. I was going to but see, we look, and they don't make them like I used to have, where it's just nope. simple. You put it in and do everything else, computerized and sent. I can I can hook my phone up to that washer yeah. and dryer and tell it to wash. Yeah, we don't. We, I stuff want, you don't even need. Yeah, I didn't want all that, but you can't get around it early. But anyway, they don't they don't make old simple washing machines right. like you used to have, like we wanted. But but it is this one here is a lot. Um, I could put a lot more in it than. And she needed the bigger size because, like she said, she has to wash Michaela's clothes every day. I will have every to wash day. her comforter every, every day. And her sheet. And her, and her knee pads. pads and stuff, yeah. That's every day. Every day. But it's, it's a lot bigger, and the dryer's bigger. My dryer's got a light in it. Yeah, that's cool, ain't it? They're kind of fancy, but... But anyway, thank, thank you, and you know who you are. We don't know exactly who it is, but we got a good idea. Nevertheless, that's not important. We thank you. You know who you are for sure, and God does. Yeah. So we finally spent that money on her washing machine that you donated, and thank you for that. Yeah. Some good people on YouTube. Speaking of good people on YouTube, the lumber. Oh, yeah. Check this out. Y'all had a, a subscriber uh, here in South Carolina that graciously uh, donated this lumber to our homestead and actually delivered it for free can you believe that we're so grateful for our subscribers on here and uh, everywhere and our special hours too right here in south carolina so i sure appreciate it you know who you are i don't know if you want your name mentioned or not for privacy reason i won't but you know who you are and we know who you are and god knows who you are and he's blessed you and I uh, appreciate y'all blessing us. We will put this to good use with all the different projects we got around here. But as many different sizes, different lengths, four by fours, two by fours, one buys, two buys. I mean, just all kind of stuff here that we can use in this pile. So I thank y'all again. May God richly bless you and your families. I tell you, God is good, y'all. If we do right by him, he'll do right by us. Amen. And by the way, this was scrap that was going to be thrown away. What a waste. We waste a lot in this country. And I thank you, our subscribers, for not allowing it to go to waste and thinking of us to be able to use it here on the homestead. We will put it to good use. I'm getting ready to cover it up now with that tarp. And I got it sitting on two big pallets so it don't rot. But it's probably not going to stay there long enough to do much rot. And we got a lot of projects to work on and we can use some of this to do it with. God's right on time. Thank you all again. Of the stack of lumber, we had a subscriber. What was that? We were on the way to that uh, meeting. Well, revival, or whatever. The revival down in Conway, wasn't it? Yep. And I got a phone call, and I didn't recognize the number, and I almost didn't answer it because I didn't know the number. But it was a local number. That's why you answered yep, it. Yep, it was a local number, so I answered it, and he said, "Look, you don't know me, um, but me and my wife watch your channel. Watch your channel." And she comments. 
Uh, yep, and, and she does. And when he told her who, told on who that was, he recognized the name. I recognized the name in the comments. They don't live at 30 minutes up the road, and they deliver. Asked me if I wanted any lumber. They had some. If we could use on the homestead. Yeah, I'm talking about two by fours, four by fours, one buys, two buys. I mean, good lumber. Two by what? But they're different lengths. I mean, they two two by like. Well, some of like two by two. That's what I mean by two buys. Well, some's two by fours, and they strips What's like one by. One, one by inch, one? One inch by one inch. So that's why you call them one by us. Yeah. As a one by one. Yeah. Why don't you say one by one then? Like that's you how, say two by four. That's or how construction say people talk, Robin Lynn. One by two, two by two. Construction two worker. Um, so why would you say two much. by fours and one by ones? Robin. Like two by twos. <laughs> Is there such a thing as a two Help by two? Help me. <laughs> Help me. Is there such a thing as a two by two? Yeah. But most people call two by two a two by. And one by one or one by. And so if it's the same number, you just say the first one. Yes. Is there a three by? Rob, lean. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you need to go wash the clothes and dry some clothes in your new dryer. <laughs> new three new washing machine. But anyway, we thank you for bringing the lumber. Um, a good bit of it. had his truck stacked up and when I, they delivered it for free and helped me stack it up. Um, you know, you can't beat it. No, and and told special. him if I needed some more, just let him know, and he would bring me another, another, um, another load. And I'm not going to be greedy, but We're we can gonna use. Probably going to get one more. Probably going to get one more, and... get one more load from my, it's, it's stuff I can use to finish my woodshed chicken out tractor. there. Chicken tractor, chicken tractor, a lot of stuff we can use. So thank you again for another subscriber. And I asked her, um, the the wife. I asked her. I said, How did you even find out about our channel? And you know how she said she found out about it? Celebrate Appalachia. Yep, she watched Miss Tipper's channel, Celebrate Appalachia, when we performed the wedding ceremony, officiated the wedding ceremony for Corey and Austin. That's how, that's where she first seen us and come to check us out. 30 minutes up the road. She's watching a uh, uh, YouTuber North five my hours away and ended up finding us right here, and we got some free lumber for it. So thank you, Miss Tipper, for helping us out with that. I tell you, man, some good people on YouTube. It's just amazing the stuff that people's, you know, I was going through some of my stuff. I would clean that office out, and I seen where um, Brother Bill and Gracie, where they'd sent me, she sent me stuff for um, my birthday and drew the little picture and stuff. Remember that? Um, I, I mean, there's cards that y'all sent us in the mail. It's just been a, it's just been a blessing. All the people that's blessed the stuff that they blessed you with. I mean, you just can't. And then the friendships you made, too. And then the ones that helped out with Bradley's medicine and all. Yes. So all that's been a blessing. More than, family. More than you know. It's like a big extended family, that's for sure. But um, I do want to encourage you all to uh, continue to pray for those folks in Ohio because we hear a lot more negative stuff about that. You know, there's a lot of I just think where that happened that I heard somebody talking today on YouTube about how that's going to affect a lot of the food sources out there. and, and you know, where, too. Where, That's what I'm saying. It's going to affect everywhere. Because they grow a lot of food out And now they're having more troubles with the water. They can ward off the shelves out there. And it's just a big mess created by the ones that shouldn't be in charge. I heard somebody say today, go ahead and stock up on, you know, like, some canned goods and stuff. Well, we always tell that, you so that. you'll know that from this year, you know, that's not, true. That's true. Not Seen process. That. Yeah. That. So it don't do any harm to uh, to prep and get some extra, you know, canned goods if it's just vegetables or whatever. It doesn't matter. And any kind of catastrophe like that. Water. You know? I mean, yeah, that's what. What it, the same thing that happened in Ohio could happen right here in South Carolina, North Carolina, any state in America. Yeah, because we had those, um, what, that Amtrak, we've had well, two or three that's derailed in, uh, what is it, Lake City? That's right, and I just heard today there was another uh, train derailment in um, Sarasota, Florida, I think. Well, there with was propane one in South tanks, Carolina so. the week after that. I know, but I mean, this was like today or yesterday, another one derailed. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me, if it was like one or two every now and then, you can't tell me that now that there's that many derailments, all these... 
it's stuff going on. Control. And I, and I won't get in on my little soapbox about all that. Y'all know where we stand. We don't trust the government no further. You can throw them. Um, I had a fellow this week was talking about that. How, talking about how can you not love, how can you love your country and not love the government? <laughs> I don't hate anybody, but I do not like the government we got here in America, but I still love America. I love the country I live in. Even though it's not the country I grew up in, it's still better. Um, for me, it's, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. But I do not right trust. Now, I don't know about. Um, I do not trust or like the government because I don't. I think they're up to no good all the time. But, I mean, you like. you the, A person could love their job, but not like their boss. That's right. Yeah, but anyway, just, you know, to wrap this video up, it's going to sit a spell. Um, we always like to encourage you to be vigilant. Um, stay in your work, stay in the Bible, stay on your knees in prayer. Look out for your neighbor, look out for one another. Did I tell you I got three eggs today? No. Mm -hmm. Three out of the green coop. Speaking of that, we're trying to use up the last little bit of feed that we think is causing the chicken's not delayed so i'm gonna switch over if and i'll let you know food we're gonna be getting them out they're gonna just be popping them out probably i know but we're gonna let you know is that i know everybody a lot of people on youtube have had that issue where they weren't really getting any eggs they switched from that track supply feed and went back to the, the different kind of feed and they started laying again my daddy proved it his, her daddy proved that to be very true I, but let me tell you something else about that i just thought about it i had some co-workers this asked me lately. They didn't pay any of that stuff any attention in the past. Is that stuff really true? They said about the chickens not laying eggs and the feed being tainted or whatever. And I said, it absolutely is. So I do see some people starting to open their eyes to a few things. Um, they just need to open them wide open. Cause Keep them open. Don't. Keep them open. Because I think a lot of people have become complacent or yep. whatever. Yep. They hadn't seen anything major happen. Well, supposedly nothing major happened. Well, it's, it is has been. Well, it hadn't that, hit them around home. That's the that's the deal. Yeah. You, you said it mouthful right there. It hadn't come to their doorsteps yet. And hey, what's going on in Ohio? Look what yeah. happened down in Florida. Look what happened over on um, Arkansas. And look what happened over on in Australia. But. Wait till, it, wait till it affects you and your family directly, and then it'll get your attention. Plus, I've had some subscribers that have, I won't share their names, but have, they got family members in the military, and they got them on high alert uh, with the DEF CON um, levels that I don't know a whole lot about, but I've been getting some video, some uh, text messages too. about that, where we could be on the brink of war, World War Three. I... I I forgot who was that one I was watching today said about that. I don't know about all those DEF CON, whatever, but they're saying that he's saying that the balloon, all these balloons and things that there's a distraction, a distraction for yeah. to set up for war. So people wouldn't get panicked and stuff like that. Yeah. You can but believe. He said, don't you think the government knows what they're shooting? Oh, at yeah. They shoot something yeah. out of the air. Yeah. That was just a, a silly. There's so much going on. that's not, legit that's not it's just a distraction to keep you looking over here and not paying attention to something that really don't matter to what's going on over here that you're not paying attention to that's really that really matters it's going to really affect you and your family us and, and our and family so many people just get that less like robots they believe everything that's what bothers me is as much as i love this country we have been the 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 culture has been dumbed down to believe anything i mean oh man anything it just Ooh. makes me so mad sometimes i could eat nails and spit bullets that would be good we could use the bullets <laughs> yeah. i don't think i'd be don't need to be eating any any nails but well you don't swallow them and you spit them like those saying about uh, patience is uh when you being able to remain idle when you feel like stripping the gears i feel like stripping the gears or stripping somebody's gears sometimes I mean, like, wake up. How, how much more is going to have to go on before people will say, oh. They, they must, are against it. There is something going on. But also, we got special requests. I'll keep T. Paul and Mr. Robert in your prayers. We, uh, she had a request, just a special prayer request. Um, they Mr. Just Robert. Need prayer mainly for Mr. Robert. Um, I'm on the way to church tonight. She left Robert in a uh, voice message. 
and wanting us to pray and put her on the prayer list. And we did, but at church, but on the way to church, we uh, decided to call them and had them both on speakerphone and talk with them for a few minutes on the road. And then we had prayer with them before we hung up with them. So, you know, I think that goes a long, long way with people. Not not just because it comes from us, but come from anybody. When you can take the time, stop what you're doing. And cause that's what's missing in the culture today, to actually call somebody let them know you care and have prayer with them. Because the text message is good, email is good. But um, that voice, you know, when you talk to somebody and you take the time to call them or go visit them or whatever, that means a lot to people. And that's what... That's why there's so many lonely people, hurting people. They feel like they're in this thing. Oh, 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 look at that. I wonder when that was coming. That's the second time I've done it. That's the first time I caught it. But I do pray for T. Paul and Mr. Robert uh, here in the state of South Carolina. They're really good people, and uh, they desire your prayers. And we got several others on here. I'm not going to mention all their names, but so many people. Man, I've been trying to be uh, a little more active with my devotions and a little short with scriptures and stuff and I just I think we're in a time where we need more of the word of God getting out there to the people than we ever had before and that's why I've been trying to do my best to um, try to get more scripture out there for y'all and several of you say so you sh I've seen where some of you shared these videos on your channel and I appreciate that but I, I mean I appreciate it that I don't do it for that but I appreciate it but it's mainly that just helps get the word out it's kind of like some I send these um, voice messages out now and Send it to different people, and they'll say they send it to somebody else, and they said it just keeps going and going and going and going. And that's what it's all about, just sharing the gospel. That's our responsibility, share the word. So, I hear some guineas now. Because Corey and them came back on the thing. Yeah. So, anyway, y'all uh, pray for us. We'll be praying for y'all. Leave comments below on uh, what you think about what's going on with the government and what's going on with the way they're treating those people down there in Ohio, that makes me so mad. I mean, they're just, they're not treating them right. And uh, that's, they would do you and I the same, exact same way. So we need to pray for them and continue to try to send those supplies as we can. Um, man, they just, kind of like they'll say, the, the devil's not hiding his evilness. He's all in your face today, these days. He knows, he knows his time's running out. That's what that is. He's working overtime. We hope y'all have a good weekend coming up and a good week starting off next week. Like I said, y'all pray for our church. We got a lot going on our church. It's things that pick back up a lot, and especially on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. And We got a lot of things going on, like Robert Lynn said, different and different ones gotten in there now and other men and women of the church and doing doing a really fine job. Everything's going really good at Flat Creek, so y'all keep praying for that. I'll try to get some more of my sermons. I meant to take the I meant to take the video uh my tripod with me to record my sermon this Wednesday night, but I didn't I forgot and left it home. So I'll try to get one of those back up as soon as I can, but until then the devotions I have to suffice. Anything else you want to add? All righty. Well, hope y'all have a, like I said, hope you have a good weekend. And until next time, remember, Jesus Christ loves you. And Jesus Christ is the answer for anything and everything you're going through in life. Amen. Hope y'all have a good night. Bye-bye.